Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I have invited Manan Verma. So as you all know, he's really famous at LinkedIn and I personally saw lots of his posts and I personally found his post really insightful. So today I have invited him to discuss about the manager, managerial role. So could you please give us your quick introduction so that our viewer will get to know about you? Hello, hi everyone. My name is Manan Verma. I'm basically from Chandigarh. And I've been working in tech since a while now. I've worked with organizations like Make My Trip, Upgrad, Urban Company, formerly Urban Clap, Zykus. And right now I'm working with PW, that's Physics Follow, in a tech domain. I've worked across different domains, travel, procurement, home services, uh, education. And uh, it feels really great to uh, do work which eventually impacts millions of lives. That's really nice. So what I have like observed that ki you worked as a like software engineer for a few years, uh, not few years, many years. And after that, you changed your domain from software engineer to manager. So could you please let us know that how your life changed and what is the like role requirement change after you like you transferred from software engineer role to managerial role? Got it. So uh, it's a... Uh very interesting shift from being an executor to uh, managing a team although i still uh, at times whenever i have certain buffer time try to code try to see things try to build some passion projects by the side but but most of my work uh, goes around managing my team uh, planning discussions with other stakeholders, people management, understanding strategy of the organization and much more. So uh, people think manager, engineering managers act as a very different uh, way. But uh, in my personal opinion, uh, the manager is not the most powerful one, but the person who can empower the most. So as a manager, I recommend all my peers and people who would be future software engineer managers to empower their team uh, to see where you can uh, share your knowledge share uh, and bridge all the knowledge gaps and build a state of art engineering team in whatever domain you're working at in whatever problem you're trying to solve so uh, being an executor is a very interesting role you need to deep dive into it but a manager role is uh, equally challenging you need to be focused on the outcomes more and you need to be aligned with the organization roadmap yeah that's like uh, really interesting uh, things like uh, you are having power to manage something like it is something like he, like people develop it's a, it is really a, like a nice things to do but if you are having something like you can add your input and you can uh, like uh, you are managing something something like you are uh, developing something from end to end that's really uh, like interesting uh, i can say and what you are observing right now yes and as a manager it really uh, it it is uh, at at most important how you see your team as so i've yes. seen a lot of managers i talked to so i've worked with five different companies been to three different colleges so as a whole i i've interacted with over a thousand engineers on a one to one basis on a recurring uh, in a recurring time frame so uh, i've seen many managers uh, seeing people as resources to get their work done as a manager myself i see uh, uh, me and the organization as an institution where people are coming they are learning more they are crossing whatever they see their limit as and working to their complete capacity and learning more and more skills in a collaborative manner right, right. so like uh... Uh, what I can say, like lots of our, our viewers are also someone who is preparing for uh, switching from software engineering domain to manager domain, like something like someone is currently working as a software engineer, but they want to prepare for switching from their role from software engineer to like a managerial role. So what are some suggestions you want to give them and how they should prepare for that? Got it. So uh, most of the organizations 
uh, in Indian ecosystem or the US ecosystem have a well-defined hierarchy, which generally starts from SD1, SD2, SD3, and then it goes either to a managerial path, which is engineering manager, senior engineering manager, or it goes to an individual contributor way, which is SD4, principal architect, and much more as per the conventions and the nomenclature used by the organization. So being an individual contributor is itself a very rewarding role. Uh, uh, you get to deep dive into something where you need to spend a huge amount of time, re read research papers and uh, follow that domain more extensively and build a solution for that. Being a manager is more like you're uh, delivering the business outcomes uh, and you would be working with a set of people to deliver that you will be delegating your work you will be enhancing your people management skills you will be negotiating with all the stakeholders for your timelines and priorities of your deliverables so uh, you need to align your mindset that uh, what are you good at are you good at just working on one side of corner and building something which is state of art or you want to build something but get help from multiple people and hence drive a team and uh, uh, generally I've seen most of the people taking the managerial path and very few people taking the uh, distinguished uh, role of being an IC but IC roles are equally rewarded and uh, uh, it is as per the comfort level as and the interest of that specific individual uh, that uh, which path they wish to choose and it's not a very hard thing that once once you have taken one path you can be on that side always uh, you can change your path you can change your domains uh, as like you can learn new skills you can uh, be competent and take that specific role as and when uh, you feel like and uh, overall uh, i feel both paths to be equally rewarding equally respectful and equally challenging correct correct yeah this is really insightful uh the next question i want to ask like uh let's say like uh, you are interviewing some person uh like uh as I can say, like there are a lot, like in every interview, we used to have one managerial round. Like after completing like tech round, uh, there used to be some managerial round. So let's say you are interviewing some person for your team. So what are some key criteria you will look uh, on that person? Uh, there could be a couple of. Uh, first, I would try to understand how long term that person is thinking not specifically to an organization or a project but whenever you're given a pro uh, problem statement some people tend to just jump into the problem without thinking twice about what we are trying to achieve by solving this so a person should be thinking a bit long term what could be the future complexities how can this solution be more future proof in nature and how that person reacts to things when uh, things are not in his or her favor. Whenever, say, you are not able to complete a deadline, how, how do you react to it? Whenever you have a third party dependency and things are not in not your favor, how do you react on that? If you have to communicate effectively that uh, we won't be able to deliver this by this specific timeline, how do you communicate in that manner? And also uh, on uh, one side, I try to assess that uh, uh, I just, uh, this one question goes every time I'm having a discussion with uh, any of the candidate that which is the most exciting project you have done in your career and what were the key takeaways. This gives you a clarity about uh, what kind of project that person thinks big in nature, impactful in nature. It could be a very big business project which uh, might not require a lot of tech dependencies and it could be a hardcore tech project which, which might not drive many business outcomes but had to be solved in order to build a more performant tech. So uh, I assess people uh, by asking how their journey has been, what kind of challenges they have been through, what kind of uh, project and work excites them in, uh, in coming times. And accordingly, I can make a judgment whether that person uh, could be a right fit or not for the organization. Wonderful. 
Yeah. yeah. So actually, when I do, used to do live YouTube, like lots of uh, like a student used to ask this question that how to prepare for managerial round. And I think like whatever you have described, this is very uh, like uh, informative for them because I can't like uh, suggest anything from my side because I am not in the like uh, managerial role. So if someone is uh, actually working in the managerial role, they could I'm only able to explain that how one should prepare for the managerial round. So this is really uh, like great explanation for that so with this uh, like answer i want to end this podcast this was a really nice podcast and uh, this is a really nice recording with um, manan thank you thank you so much for accepting our invitation and yeah uh, so before like ending this podcast do you want to say something to our viewers yeah i would uh, end it with a quote from tony morrison that uh, all the people who are currently either pursuing engineering or are working as engineers at any levels, uh, engineering is not a grab back candy game. It's not that you go get all the knowledge and just uh, keep it by your side. It's more about collaboration. If you're done with your work, you should free somebody else. You should build solutions which will save time. Engineering as a concept is basically saving time saving time, saving energy so that you can do multiple other things so that other people can do other things. So when you're free and you have time, you should free somebody else. It's not a grab back, grab back candy game. It's more about collaborations. And if we work in a more collaborative manner across industries, across organizations, uh, together we will make tomorrow better than today. Thank you. Thank you so much for this really great advice.